In truth, the moon is falling toward the Earth all the time. It's just that it's moving so quickly, laterally with respect to the Earth, that it never quite hits the surface. If you imagine throwing an object as hard and as fast as you can and tracing its trajectory, you'll see that the object moves away from you while simultaneously falling toward the ground. The faster you throw something, the further it gets before it lands. Because the Earth is a sphere, no matter what the flat earthers say, the ground is slowly sloping downward. There's a speed at which an object's forward momentum matches the curvature of the Earth. At that speed, you can keep on falling forever as long as you don't slow down. Of course, orbits are a bit more complicated, but that's basically what's happening. Gravity pulls the Earth and the Moon together, but they're moving too fast to hit. That's a stable orbit. In actuality, the Moon isn't in a totally stable orbit, insomuch as the speed and gravity aren't perfectly matched. But we have the opposite problem as the one presented in Moonfall. Over time, the Moon is getting farther from the Earth at a rate of roughly 4 centimeters a year. This might come as a surprise, but the Moon is, in fact, falling toward Earth as we speak. It has been falling since its formation about 4.5 billion years ago. This chilling fact was first discovered by Sir Isaac Newton in 1667. In essence, Sir Isaac Newton showed that the motion of an apple falling from a tree is equivalent to that of the moon orbiting the Earth. Both are falling toward the center of the Earth. Unlike the apple, which falls vertically downwards, the moon's tangential velocity pushes it over the edge of the planet, which keeps it in a loop around Earth. What would cause the moon to crash? It's hard to find an explanation of how the moon would fall out of orbit, but let's assume that some mysterious force does this, and the moon suddenly begins to plummet vertically downwards toward the Earth, like a giant heavenly apple. Let us further take that the Moon starts from rest, that is, with zero vertical velocity relative to Earth. It will come crashing down to Earth in about five days, giving us plenty of time to dwell on our mistakes. Here is how I think it'll go down. Day 1. Panic. The very first people to notice would be the folks working in one of the 500-plus observatories located all over the world. Imagine they'd be pinching themselves to make sure they aren't dreaming. Word will spread fast and within only a matter of hours, almost the entire space community will join the panic club. I suppose next in line would be the heads of state. Imagine having to brief the President of the United States that the moon is falling from the sky and will wipe us all. The average person wouldn't notice anything up until this point. The moon in the night sky wouldn't be big enough to raise any alarms. It would be business as usual, but not for long. By the end of the first day, at least a few hundred million people on the planet would have gotten wind of the imminent demise, and the hashtags, hash end of the world, hash Armageddon, hash moonfall, will start trending on social media. Over in their laboratories and offices, scientists all over the world would be busy looking for ways to save the planet. Day 2. It's happening. There will be plenty of speculation on the internet with multiple conspiracy theories in circulation. A handful of individuals and minor news outlets wanting to beat the rest to the punch would release the breaking news confirming the imminent disaster, stating their source as a close member of the scientific community and advisor to the president who wants to remain anonymous. Folks on the other end of the globe, where it's dark, would begin to notice the increasing size of the moon, and those close to the oceans will experience bigger tides. The pressure will mount by the minute as public speculation and uneasiness increase. By the end of the second day, several heads of state would get on national TV and confirm the news, naturally asking the public to remain calm and peaceful. 
Day 3. We are doomed. Not sure how people will react to this, but if you live in a large city, there may be an increase in sirens as chaos and unrest ensue. Hopefully you won't be in critical need of any emergency service, cause the EMS may be overwhelmed or just unbothered in the midst of the chaos. I hope they'll still have telephone and internet services, because that would be the time to call your loved ones. Folks will hit the road trying to get to their families in these last days, and traffic jams on the freeways are to be expected. Perhaps the top leaders from all over the world try to put their heads together in a last-ditch effort to save humanity. However, there wouldn't be enough time or resources to avert the disaster. Even if we bomb the moon with all our nuclear power and chemical explosives, it wouldn't change course or minimize the disaster. If anything, it would just add nuclear radiation into the already extinction-level disaster. With all hope gone, they would probably bid each other good luck, make amends, and focus on spending their last days with their families or nations. More heads of state would get on national TV and confirm the impending disaster. By the end of the third day, the moon will significantly look bigger and the secondary effects of the proximity will be heightened. It is hard to accurately predict how this will affect things here on Earth, but I suppose the tides would be big enough to submerge islands and coastal towns and cities. Also, the moon's gravitational pull could be strong enough to churn up and heat some mantle, leading to sudden volcanic eruptions, earthquakes and tsunamis. Day 4. Goodbye. With a little more than a day to survive, there would still be widespread panic and fear as more and more people come to grips with the harrowing situation. The moon would now occupy more than half the sky and fall faster and faster. Perhaps several hundred million people would have already died from the preliminary disasters of flooding, volcanism, panic and violence, and more would be dying by the minute. Religious and spiritual leaders may attempt to offer comfort and guidance to their followers, and some people may turn to their faith for solace in the face of the end of the world. Those with their families would probably be enjoying some very needed quality time. Most things we hold dear would now be pointless. Power, money, jobs, education, etc. Day 5. The End the good thing is, it'll happen fast. The moon will smash into the Earth at 10 kilometers per s, 22,000 miles per hour, sending out a shock wave that'll sure to kill everything that moves. Adios, human beings. It's been a great run of about two million years ago. So friends, what do you think about this theory? Write your views in the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get interesting videos. If you like the video, please like and share the video.